Welcome to Clawhammer. Today I'm brewing a beer for a barrel. Oh, fuck. It's actually from our friend Ross, who's moving halfway across the country. We're sad to see him go. He's been a part of this YouTube channel for many years. He's also done weekly meetups with the Dungeons and Dragons group for nearly four straight years, and they've actually rented a small castle for the last session. So I'm actually gonna surprise him with this barrel of beer, which fits the theme of their group, because in the campaign, two of the adventurers run a brewery. The only hitch? I only have like a week to brewing condition a beer and solve kind of a big problem. This isn't actually a beer cask. There is a hole for filling, but there's no way to properly get the beer out. It's just a barrel. I haven't figured out how I'm gonna turn this into something I can serve beer out of yet, but at any rate, I'm getting started with the beer, which is just gonna be like an English pub ale. I double crushed about 13 pounds of Maris Otter, two pounds of pale wheat malt, and half a pound of carrot amber malt. I mashed at 154 degrees Fahrenheit for 60 minutes using the Clawhammer 240 volt controller and element, and I also recirculated wort the entire time. After that, I pulled the grains and set the controller to a boil. Once the grains drained for about 10 minutes, I walked them out back and I emptied the basket into my neighbor's yard. Just kidding, but I did throw them behind my fence. I like rinsing my gear as soon as possible once I'm done using it because beer mash ingredients are very sticky and the sooner you get to it, the better. Soon after that, the wort was boiling and it was time to add hops. This recipe only called for one hop addition, two and a half ounces of fuggle that needed to boil for 60 minutes. After the boil was finished, I chilled the wort down to 70 degrees Fahrenheit and I transferred it over to a keg for fermenting. I added a package of English ale yeast, but I also co-pitched a package of fast fermenting Kvike. Like I said, I only have a week to get this project done. I'm cutting it really close. I aerated the wort, I left it set at room temperature, and I basically just crossed my fingers that it would be done in time for Ross's big send off. Now it's time to switch back over to the barrel, which I'm thinking is not going to go as smooth as the beer did. The first thing I needed to do uh, is drill a hole for what's called a keystone. It's actually a small plastic part that's pounded into the end of a cask before it's tapped with the spigot, which is also pounded into place. I'm kind of nervous because if I get the size of this hole wrong, the results would pretty much be disastrous. I don't know, man. So time to fill it. After that, I hydrated the barrel. I've hydrated a barrel or two in one day, but it's gonna take a little bit of time. That's why I wanna do this now. After filling the barrel with warm water, I left it sit for 24 hours. So check out the front of the barrel here. It's still weeping a little bit, uh, but it's not just like pouring out as it was when we first hydrated the barrel or when we first filled it up. Ideally, you know, I'd leave this sit like another week or something before I put beer in it, but I just don't have that luxury. We have to get the show on the road here. So what I'm going to do is now dump this out and then I'm gonna refill it with um, some fresh water and some star sand to make an attempt to sanitize it. I feel like if I put the, the star sand in there first, it's gonna make like a foamy mess. Yeah, that was a big mistake. Big, huge mistake. All right, I knew this was gonna happen. I knew it was gonna happen, and I don't know why I just did it anyway. Oh, well, technically star sand sanitizes like 99.9% .9 of you know, bacteria in 30 seconds. I'm gonna leave this sitting here for quite a bit longer than I normally do so it can permeate into the wood in case there are any microorganisms kind of deeper in there. Um, hopefully we will zap them with the sanitizer and this beer won't get like crazy funky immediately. This barrel's not set up for 
cask conditioning. It's just not set up to like hold the pressure. So it's really gonna be just like a barrel for like a quick aging and serving. This is not carbonated, like at all. It's like tiny, tiny bit, but not quite enough. I want it to be low carbonation, but it's just not enough. So I'm going to transfer it into another keg, do a little like quick carb gently, and then put it in this barrel. So we've got star sand in the barrel here. Oh, this is gonna make a big mess. So here's what I want to do. I want to cut this dip tube, the, the hard dip tube. I have a floating dip tube in here, but when you do a floating dip tube, you always leave a little bit of liquid behind. Usually not an issue, except for the fact that I'm gonna have just barely enough to fill this barrel, so. Oh, okay, cool. So, so now that I've done that, um, let's put a little bit of gas on it. We'll pour some out and just we'll just see how much sediment, if any, we have coming out. Okay, so yeah, it's like, it's fairly clear. It's not clear beer, but I'm not sucking up yeast, basically. So I cut my dip tube short enough. Quite good. This is by no means going to be a closed transfer, so it is going to see some oxygen because I'm not going to purge this tank with CO2. Um, what I don't want to do is like splash it around because that will make it go stale fairly quickly. So. What I want it to do is run the serving hose or tube or whatever I use all the way down to the bottom of the barrel and fill it from the bottom up essentially. So I'm just gonna like purge this. Try and purge the oxygen out with CO2. CO2 is, um, I believe, slightly heavier than the oxygen, so pure CO2. So if I fill this up, it should kinda settle in here and then I can put my little stopper on it. Let's plug this thing. To recap, we turned a whiskey barrel into a barrel that you could serve beer out of. I think, <laughs> hopefully. Um, it's full, it's purged, it's capped. I'm gonna pass this along to Ross, along with this um, tap here. And um, he's gonna tap it, he's gonna hang out with his friends actually, play some Dungeons and Dragons, and this is gonna be like the centerpiece because I guess in their campaign, uh, they have a brewery, and imagine that. And uh, yeah, so they're gonna have some real life beer there. This is a it's a whiskey barrel, it's not like an actual firkin. So what I'm pretty sure I need to do, I can't like, and it may be under pressure. So I think I need to slice this open. Okay. okay. And then slice. just beat yeah. that thing in there, yeah. Yeah. Do a slicey. You know, here's our guy. Mm -hmm. Look at yeah. that. Yeah. Bunghole! Bunghole, yeah. That's pretty good. Alright, then once it's bunged out, I'm gonna put on your faucet real good. And it's beer! It's more of a roller! Oh, okay. Just keep it rolling. It's more of a roller. <laughs> <laughs>